We haven't been to the Yai Publishing House in a while. Paimon wonders if they have any new books in. The one we read with A that time was pretty cool. Come on, this is a no-brainer, man. There's only one thing worth wishing for, and that is a ton of Mora. But the exam's next week. If I fail again, I'm seriously done for. I'm better off wishing that my exam goes smoothly. Ah, it's just an exam. Trust me, there's no problem you can't solve by throwing Mora at it. If it doesn't work, then just keep throwing till it does. What are they arguing about? It's quite a spirited debate. Huh? Really? You guys don't know? You need but stand on this land at midnight, lower your head and recite a special incantation, then your wish will come true! Looks like you guys really aren't in the loop. This, my friends, is the next big thing. A highly effective wish ritual guaranteed to make your wishes come true. A wish ritual? That actually works? Right? Even Paimon knows that's just not how the world works! <laughs> I didn't believe it at first either, but that changed when it worked for someone I know. It's this guy called Kunihiko. He's practically always been unemployed, wastes his days away, and he owes a lot of money. Like, a lot. But get this. I don't see him for a few days, and suddenly, I find him dressed to the nines and feasting at a high-class restaurant. I heard it directly from him. He used this wishing ritual, and the next day he woke up to find his whole bed filled high with Mora. His whole bed was filled with... Wow! Of course, I'm sure the part about waking up lying on a bed of Mora is a bit of an exaggeration. Whether you believe it or not, it's not exactly a difficult ritual. It can't hurt to give it a try, right? If you're still feeling skeptical, just ask around. There are a lot of very compelling stories going around these days. Really? Well, come on! Let's go ask around right now, shall we? Well, if it really is true, then just think of all the more a Paimon could... Oh, and you'd finally be reunited with your twin, too! <laughs> let's go, let's go! Grasp the thought in mind, clear like, uh, clear like the light of the moon, as close as kin with you, no, thou, wait, thee, uh, hear my summons, right? No, no, it's not hear my summons, it's heed my summons, heed. <sighs> You're never going to get it down at this rate. me okay <sighs> okay uh, where did I leave off with the incantation again incantation are you guys trying out this new wishing ritual stuff too Junkichi is trying it out to be specific he's hit a bit of a creativity block recently so uh, I'm helping him make a wish so that he can move past it I mean I obviously don't but Junkichi never listens to an outside opinion, so all I can do is go along with it. Mr. Shigeru, can you please be a little more accommodating? This is extremely important to me. People have had all kinds of wishes come true, become more attractive, get rich quick, ace their studies. I'm just a poor, struggling writer looking to get over a creative hurdle. Is that so much to ask? <sighs> anyway, I just know this is going to work. I have a gut feeling about it. Didn't you say the same thing when you went to make your wish at the Grand Narukami Shrine? Oh, I just know this is gonna work. I have a gut feeling about it. The Omamori from the Shrine take too long to have any effect on your luck. <sighs> Alright, enough of that. Help me get this incantation down. My new book depends on it. 
<sighs> Look, to be completely honest, I think you need to sit down and have a good think about what kind of story you want to write. Where's all that self-confidence you had when you first started out? Look at you now, trying dubious methods from any old light novel. Wait, 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 what? This wishing ritual comes from a light novel? Yep, it's from the one called A First-Hand Guide to Summoning Spirits. No, it's most likely a self-published title. It just appeared out of nowhere and took Inazuma by storm. As a fellow writer, I'll refrain from passing comment on how well the story is written, but everyone is saying the wishing incantations it contains are the real deal. Look, Chunkichi, yes, everyone's saying it's real, it works, but that's only half the story. I've also heard lots of people saying that everyone who's had their wish granted using this method starts behaving strangely. What's so surprising about that? They're probably just giddy with joy at having their wish come true. Hmm, this is starting to sound a little suspicious. Why don't we go to the Grand Narukami Shrine and ask Yaimiko about it? She's the expert when it comes to both light novels and the supernatural. Rasp the thought in mind. Clear like the light of the moon. Uh, how does it go after that? Shunkichi, just give it up. Do you really think someone's going to just descend from the heavens and write your novel for you? I can't believe I'm saying this to a writer, but you need to learn to separate fact from fiction. Mr. Shigeru, please. I'd appreciate it if you stopped trying to tear my dreams to smithereens. I am in great distress and desperately need to make a breakthrough. Miko! Great, you're here! Well, hello there, young ones. What brings you to the shrine? It just so happens that I have a wonderful novel here. I highly recommend it. Oh? Well, what did you want to ask? Well, we were just... Uh, actually, you look kind of busy. Is this a bad time? <laughs> no, not at all. It's nothing major. L Lady Guji, what do you mean, nothing major? I'm begging you, you've got to help me save my brother. It really is nothing major, I stand by that. Oh, but since you're so curious, let's have him relate the story one more time, just for you. You two seem to have a good relationship with Guji Ai. Please, put in a good word for me. You have to convince her to help my brother. Here's what happened. My name is Kato Yohei, and my brother is Kato Shingo. All he's ever wanted is to become a swordmaster. So he once asked Sensei Domon of the Meikyo Shisui art to take him on as a disciple. Domon turned him away, took one look at him and said he didn't have what it takes to train in the art of the sword. But my brother wasn't about to resign himself to defeat. He trained every day as hard as he could, and finally proved himself by defeating one of Domon's best disciples in a duel recently. But since his victory, he's been acting extremely strange. It's like he's become a completely different person. The doctors can't find anything wrong with him, so I'm betting it must be the work of an evil spirit. That's why I'm here, begging for Guji Yai's help. <laughs> you know, there really aren't as many evil spirits lurking around as you seem to think. Your brother achieved the goal he'd been striving toward for as long as he can remember, and now it's gone. It's only natural that he feels a little empty and lost while he's trying to find a new direction. If it were me, I'd just leave him be for a couple of days. He'll recover on his own soon enough. No, Lady Guji. If you saw him for yourself, you'd know. I guarantee you, he's not acting like someone who feels empty and lost. Oh, all right, all right. Then tell me, when did your brother spar with Domon's disciple? About... five days ago. Hmm, five days ago, you say? Yes, Lady Guji. That's a long time for him to be acting up like this. I'm really worried about him. 
Our greatest wish is to one day found our own school, just like Domon. We can't jeopardize that dream now. Wait a minute, now I'm a little confused. Are you here to save your brother, or are you here to make your dreams of founding a martial arts school come true? Uh, well, they're kind of two sides of the same coin, aren't they? Hmm? Whatever. Let me ask you this. Have you heard of any interesting new rumors lately? If so, I'd love to hear about them. What? Rumors? I... I haven't heard anything. Oh dear. Well, that's too bad. Lady Guji, please stop changing the subject. This is someone's life we're talking about here. Please, you've got to help me. Miko, he seems really desperate. This thing with his brother sounds really bad. Come on, you should help him. Okay, fine. Then it's decided. Yay, Miko! So you're gonna help him? Kato, whatever your name was, these two guests are trusted acquaintances of mine, and in fact, they are experts in resolving all manner of strange and supernatural phenomena. Exorcisms and that sort of thing are all in a day's work for them. Yeah! Uh, wait a sec! Um, r really? Is that hesitation that I detect in your voice? So, let me get this straight. You come begging to me for help, I actually recommend someone for the job, then suddenly you start doubting me? Not at all, never. Uh, whatever Lady Guji says, I trust wholeheartedly. Thank you two for your willingness to help. Please follow me. Now hold on a hot second, Miko! We may be a lot of things, but we ain't exorcists! <laughs> Don't worry. If he wants an exorcism, just grab a handful of salt and mutter some mumbo-jumbo while you're sprinkling it around. It's a common trope in light novels, right? You just have to have a bit of bravado. As soon as the protagonist gains self-confidence, everything else just magically falls into place. Well, you were the ones who seemed concerned about his situation. Don't you think it would be a little unfair to make me do all the work? Besides, we both know you wouldn't be here at the Grand Narukami Shrine unless you had a request for me too. This is an opportunity to demonstrate that you come in good faith. Uh, this feels all wrong, but you technically have a point, so... Alright, let's go. Don't worry now, I'll be coming along too. Okay, let's follow Yohei and go visit his brother. What is going on here? Granted, you can never be quite sure what's going on in Miko's mind, but she seems even more disinterested than usual in Yohei's situation. Well, a life's at stake here, so it looks like we'll have to deal with that first before we'll get the chance to ask her about the incantation stuff. Hmm, how strange. My brother's been meditating here pretty much constantly over the past few days, but now he's gone. Meditating? Yeah, it's something that he suddenly started doing after defeating Domon's disciple. He just sits there alone, talking to himself. It's pretty disturbing, actually. But that's not important right now. Where the heck could he have gone in his current state? Hmm... This does pose a bit of a problem. If we can't find your brother, well, we can't perform an exorcism with nothing to exercise, can we? Kato, whatever your name was, given the circumstances, why don't you start by going to find your brother and also picking up a handful of salt on your way? We'll need to use it during the exorcism. Okay. Okay, got it. I'm on it. Miko, what about us? Shouldn't we help look for his brother, too? <laughs> no need. While What's-His-Face is handling that, we'll take a walk around and ask people what they know about the two brothers. Maybe we'll find out some amusing details. you 
about the Kato brothers. Oh, are you debt collectors? Yohei said to tell you not to worry. He'll be able to pay you back as soon as he has enrolled a few disciples. Huh? Debt collectors? No, no, we're not here for anything like that. But, uh, it sounds like Yohei and Shingo have gotten themselves into a bit of a pickle. Well, yes. I don't think there's any disputing that. Those two don't have an ounce of dedication between them. They just hop between ideas and won't stick to anything. Huh? But Yohei said his brother has always wanted to become a swordmaster, and even asked Domon to be his sensei. That's true, yes. Shingo begged Domon to take him on, and eventually, he finally relented. But even after convincing a renowned sensei to give him a chance, he was the same as ever bumming around in class instead of focusing on his training. In the end, Domon had had enough and kicked him out. But Shingo was resentful about it. He blamed Domon for not seeing his potential, and even declared that he would challenge a disciple of Domon to a duel. Wait, what? That's not what we heard. Oh, how interesting. We heard a slightly different version. My brother wasn't about to resign himself to defeat. He trained every day as hard as he could and finally proved himself by defeating one of Domon's best disciples in a duel recently. <laughs> Yohei said that? That Shingo trained hard? That's ridiculous. He just lay there cussing to high heaven all day every day. Some training regimen, that is. Yohei did tell me about Shingo winning the fight, but I took it with a grain of salt. You can ask Kenji at the village entrance more about that. He always has reliable information. Shingo and Yohei. Yeah, we heard that Shingo defeated an apprentice of Domon's recently. Is that true? <laughs> yes, it's true. Wait, so are you here because you heard they're starting their own school and you're looking to sign up? We're not here to sign up, but we would like to hear more details about the fight. Well, you've come to the right person. I actually went to watch it. I thought it was a joke when I first heard that Shingo was going to challenge a disciple of the Meikyo Shisui art. But when he drew his sword, oh, he became a whole different person. The way he handled his blade, it was like flowing water, mesmerizing to watch. Domon's disciple is no pushover, but he was absolutely no match for Shingo. Is Shingo really that strong? Yep, he seemed pretty euphoric after winning the duel too. He was celebrating very vocally, saying something like, What a duel. I haven't felt this good in a long time. <laughs> Any other details to share? We've heard that Shingo has been behaving rather out of character since then. Hmm. I'd definitely say that he has more energy than he used to. In the past, he never used to do much except lie around sunbathing all day. But just yesterday, for example, I saw him cutting down trees for the village head. In the space of one afternoon, he did what most people couldn't finish in three days. Not only that, but he managed to fell a lavender melon tree with just one kick. Oh. Hmm, quite impressive. Things got weird after that, though. The village head brought out some tofu for him, and he just flipped out. He shouted, what is that stuff? Keep that away from me, and then ran off. Lady Guji, esteemed exorcists, finally I found you. I found my brother. He's at the waterfall. And I've got the salt you asked for, too. Come on, let's go! Oh, as much as I'd prefer to stay and hear some more delicious details, I suppose we'd better be going now that he has been found. Look. Look over there. That's him at the waterfall. So this is Yohei's brother. Whoa, he's meditating while sitting in a waterfall. That's pretty wild. Hey, listen, he's talking to himself. <clears throat> Woo! 
<laughs> How's that? <laughs> Can you feel it? Uh. Can you feel the feeling of manliness? Found your own school. <laughs> so shallow. How can a manly man aspire to something so lame? Uh, please spare me, spare me. I, I can't feel the manliness. I can't even feel the cold anymore. I, I can't take any more. I'm gonna die. Yohei, Yohei, save me. Save me! Did you hear that? All the nonsense aside, he's going for help! Huh? Who... Who goes there? He stood up! And now he's coming this way! No! Don't come any closer! Help! What do we do? Miko, make him something! Oh, poor thing. Yohei, your brother's life is hanging in the balance, and he's using his final breaths to call on you for help. Whatever shall we do? Uh, I... Well, how should I know? The way it looks to me is that Shingo feels terribly resentful to you about something. Would you mind telling me what that's all about? I don't know what to tell you. I don't know. You don't know, but surely you should have more insight than anyone else into how your brother came to be this way? Yohei, I suggest you think very carefully before you open your mouth again. This is a life or death situation. Uh, um, um... Uh, uh, um, your brother is your closest relative. You must have noticed straight away when he started acting out of character. And yet, five whole days pass before it occurs to you to come and seek help from me. You really expect me not to notice the gaping holes in your story? But, uh, I... As you wish. It's fine by me if you don't want to tell the truth. But after Shingo dies, you'll be next. It's futile trying to escape. Anywhere in the world you run to, it will be right behind your back. After all, you did summon it together. Ah! All right, I'll talk, I'll talk, I'll tell you everything. My brother and I used a wishing incantation. We made a wish. Yes, yes, that's it. The one that's all the rage right now. You just have to recite an incantation at midnight and your wish will be granted. Just like the book described, we drew the magic symbol, stepped inside it barefoot at midnight, said the incantation, and lo and behold, spheres of light appeared all around us. After my brother wished to become a swordmaster, it really worked. Out of nowhere, he suddenly had these amazing sword skills, but his whole personality changed too. Because... I was worried that if he goes back to normal, he'll lose his skills with the sword. If that happens, it'd ruin our plans to start a martial arts school, and we'd be back to being poor. I just wanted to keep this under wraps until we'd managed to get the dojo set up and paid off our debts. So then, why'd you go to the Grand Narokami Shrine? Well, cause with the way he's acting now, I was worried that rumors might start spreading that he's gotten involved in the occult arts or something. And then no one would want to sign up as his disciple. So I was thinking that maybe Lady Guji might have a way to get my brother back to normal, but let him keep his sword skills? My, look at you with your ingenious schemes. Stop deluding yourself. These newfound sword skills are not his. They belong to the spirit that has possessed him. You're right, you're right. We were wrong to do what we did. We had this coming. All right, then. Your turn now, my little friend. Toss the salt, and then draw your sword. It 
It's the spirit! See that? That's what you summoned. And look, now that Shingo's no use, it's coming straight for you. <laughs> Save me! Save me! Uh, Miko! He fainted! What do we do now? We do nothing. But you, little one, just a quick fight and this will all be over. <laughs> Who's this? Ah, a fellow swordmaster. Come on, fight me! He's coming! Be careful! Got Let him. me try Hey! Emerge, right now. Order guide you. Stabilize. Emerge right here. Everyone hold hands. This will yeah. do. Yeah. <laughs> that was great. Excellent. What a rush. I haven't felt this great in a long, long time. He disappeared! But he looked pretty content at the end there. Huh. Well, Paimon sure is confused. Do you know what that was all about? Ah, we can talk about it later. They're about to wake up. <coughs> what am I doing here? Yohei? Yohei, is that you? Shingo, are you all right? Yohei, I had the weirdest dream. I dreamed that I wasn't a useless loser with a sword anymore. I even beat one of Dolmon's disciples. I thought we could finally open a dojo of our own now. But then I realized I couldn't control my own body. And there was this voice in my ear talking to me constantly. I was terrified, and I wanted to take control of my body back, but I couldn't. And the voice kept talking about manliness. Shingo, we shouldn't have made that wish. We summoned a spirit, and it possessed you. Yes, and had we not come to your rescue, your life would have been over before too much longer. Then the spirit would have haunted your brother until he died of fatigue too. Thank you, Lady Guji, and thank you for your assistance, exorcism experts. All right, take him to get some rest. He's very weak right now, having been possessed for quite a few days. He will experience a high fever, but it won't be fatal. Remember, this is the price you pay. At this point, I would normally lecture you on the dire consequences of using occult methods to obtain power that does not belong to you. But I think you get the picture now. Don't you? Yes, we understand now. We won't do it ever again. Thank you, Lady Guji. Thank you, exorcists. We'll be on our way then. Come on, Shingo. Miko, would they really have lost their lives if we hadn't gotten involved? And if so, why the heck were you so reluctant to help out? Oh, they would have been fine. I had to scare them a little, though. Otherwise, I hardly think these two lazy rascals would have learned their lesson. So, what was it that possessed Shingo? You saw it all for yourselves. I'm sure you can figure out what kind of spirit had possessed him, can't you? Ah! Paimon's got it! It was an Oni. Correct. Although it possessed Chingo, it didn't have any ill intentions. As a matter of fact, it actually seemed like it was trying to train Chingo to become bolder. Huh. Fair enough. But it seemed like it had the opposite effect. Tossing salt caused it to temporarily leave Chingo's body. Then, you exhausted its strength by fighting it, so it disappeared. 
Even if we'd done nothing at all, Shingo would have eventually become too weak for his body to host the spirit, and it would have left of its own accord. Of course, it would have been more stressful for Shingo and Yohei that way. <laughs> Still, the experience may ultimately have been more effective than me scaring them into submission with a little exaggeration. The main thing is that nobody got hurt. All right, seems like we've wrapped up everything here. Come on, off we go. Hold on, Miko. You say everything's wrapped up, but are you sure about that? Hmm? You mean you disagree? Oh, you mean that they got the incantation from that book. Yes, I know the one. Actually, that book's the whole reason we came looking for you at the shrine today. Incantations seem really popular right now. Human beings don't have powers like us yokai. It's quite understandable for them to be interested in incantations to summon the supernatural. That's not the point. The problem is that the incantations in the book are actually capable of summoning spirits and stuff. And loads of people are trying it. Oh, <sighs> even then, humans only have so much strength. Even if they do successfully summon a spirit with the incantation, it won't stay with them for very long. I really wouldn't fret about it. But who wrote this book? And why? Don't we think there might be a bigger safety risk here? What do you think, Traveler? You're right. Big events in the light novel market should be at the center of her attention, surely. But she doesn't seem to care about this book at all. <sighs> Lady Yai, I finally found you. Kuroda, what are you doing here? I'm here to report on Yai Publishing House's sales for the last month. All the numbers are here. Please, take a look. Let me see. What? We're losing market share? Yes, overall bestseller, reader's favorite, and trending ranking. We're being beaten in all categories. One book is topping the charts. It's called A First-Hand Guide to Summoning Spirits. Both of you, back here now. Nico, what is it? You have a really scary look on your face right now. Things just got serious. A first-hand guide to summoning spirits is an all-round hit, summarily beating the novels of the Yai Publishing House by every analysis. Just what is that supposed to mean? Hai worked extremely hard to promote our latest featured work, and now a rival book comes out of nowhere and steals our thunder. If this isn't the very definition of intolerable, I don't know what is. I have to come up with a counterplan. And you are going to help me. Huh? How is this our problem all of a sudden? Paimon, please. Who wrote this book and why? Don't we think there might be a bigger safety risk here? Oh, am I to take it that the safety of the people of Inazuma isn't so important in your eyes after all? Wait, what? Nothing's wrong, okay? Come on. We're going to war. I'm going to head back and make some preparations. Meet me outside the Yai Publishing House. Why don't you take a guess? I'll give you a hint. It's to do with the Yai Publishing House. Hmm. Oh, Paimon knows! Combine the reputation of the Yai Publishing House with the status of Guji Yai and tell everyone that the incantation
incantations in that book are dangerous! Oh, wow! Your first guess and you got it absolutely... wrong. Hand Guide to Summoning Spirits is the hottest light novel right now. If we did as you suggested, we would effectively be advertising to everyone that the incantations are real. In bending over backwards trying to warn everyone about the dangers, all we would accomplish is to create more curious readers ready to try them out. Also, sales for the book would only increase further. Okay, yeah, that would be pretty catastrophic. Hmm. Oh! How about we confiscate all the copies? <sighs> Leaving aside the issue of the enormous manpower and resources such an operation would require, going to such lengths over a light novel would be extremely disruptive to the lives of Inazumans. But that means there's nothing we can do! Well, I've been thinking. I've read a first-hand guide to summoning spirits, it has many other good qualities besides the incantations alone. The book contains many ancient kaiden, or tales of the supernatural, and is written in a very engaging way. That is why the book has become so popular. Hmm... I think we're going to have a difficult time trying to rein in its popularity while it's the only work in its league on the market. That's right. How do you get rid of the next big thing? You replace it with the next, next big thing. So what we're going to do is create Inazuma's newest hit novel. Smash our rival's sales numbers and win our readers back. That is how Yaimiko wages war. Incidentally, this will also be the best way to combat the influence of a first-hand guide to summoning spirits. Wait, Miko! So, you want us to write a novel? <laughs> well, becoming an accomplished novelist certainly isn't an overnight process. But let's not forget that I am the chief editor of the Yai Publishing House. I have my ways. I did say this is what we're going to do. I trust that the word teamwork is in your vocabulary. Anyway, there is a writer's submission event going on at the moment. Start by talking to readers and finding out what they're into. When you have an idea of what the current trends are, come back and see me. I'll be at Uyu Restaurant. Find me there when you're done. I will assemble a team, and we can work while we eat. The key to a successful light novel is having good illustrations. When to use illustrations, what they should contain, and which artists you should commission for them. These are all key things to bear in mind. Good illustrations can make up for bad writing. But on the flip side, a bad illustration can ruin your novel, even if you have the best story in the world. There's a saying that light novels are essentially a case of buy art, get words free. I'd agree with that. Too bad most of the top artists have jam-packed schedules, so it's extremely difficult to commission them. The illustrations in A First-Hand Guide to Summoning Spirits are incredible, but it's unlike any art style I've ever seen before. I've been reading light novels for a long time now. I'm mainly into big, ambitious fantasy works with an original core concept and good storytelling. These days, though, everyone seems to be imitating each other. Most of the time, I can guess what the story is about just from the title. The only recent book worth mentioning is A First-Hand Guide to Summoning Spirits. Not only is it a good story, but the descriptions are really true to life. So much so that I'm almost wondering if maybe the author really has met all those yokai before. I'll be honest, I read light novels for the cheap thrills. In most traditional stories, the protagonist usually has this long and drawn-out character arc, usually involving a process of separation, loss, and ultimately growth and renewed strength. It reads well and everything, 
it's just a little slow-paced for me. By contrast, there's this popular light novel at the moment called A First-Hand Guide to Summoning Spirits, where the protagonist is super strong right from the get-go. That's what I mean by cheap thrills. Action-packed right from page one. The protagonist is a kitsune who has not only mastered the secret art of incantations, but also tea ceremony, painting, and calligraphy. There's much more to light novels than Paimon realized. <sighs> Let's go tell our findings to Yai Miko. There you are. Let me introduce the team. You've already met Junkichi and Shigeru. Shigeru is an experienced editor, and Junkichi is the author he's partnered with. Junkichi's working through a creative lull at the moment, but all his past works have been very popular with young people. He's developed a distinct and enduringly popular style. Satomi is Yai Publishing House's ace in the hole. Her specialty is that she can write all kinds of completely different stories and all under different pen names. As for what those names are, well, <laughs> that's a trade secret. They will be teaming up with us to collectively create the novel that knocks a first-hand guide to summoning spirits off its perch. So, feeling better about my plan now? Uh-huh. It definitely makes sense. <laughs> Now then, tell me what you found out about readers' preferences. Hmm, all very true. An original core concept, a fast pace, quality illustrations, and lots of action. This is the formula that will guarantee good sales numbers. More importantly than that, even though it's a work of fiction, we have to deliver a sense of realism. Paimon followed pretty much all of that, but there's still... One question. What are we actually going to write about? For example, we know we need an original core concept, but how do we come up with one? <laughs> Before you can answer that question, you have to understand your target audience. Take a first-hand guide to summoning spirits, for example. When I read it, all I find is common knowledge to the kitsune. But to the general public, it's bursting with new and interesting ideas. It all comes down to the size of the information gap between author and reader. As a traveler, there must be a great many things you know that are complete unknowns to the people of Inazuma. What is commonplace to you may be fresh and original to them. Oh, right! So maybe we can take inspiration from our time in Mondstadt and Lyon! Hmm, but that would make it a completely different genre than a first-hand guide to summoning spirits. Uh, is that going to be a problem? Not at all. You don't have to worry so much about how to compete with that book. All you have to do is provide some interesting ideas based on your travel experiences. As long as the core content is interesting, my expert team here will be able to flesh out the details. in Mondstadt for the first time to the sight of a dragon flying around and wreaking havoc on the city. With the help of some trusty companions, the protagonist successfully defeats the dragon. But then, the dragon suddenly turns into a beautiful young woman. Uh, huh? Human, let us work together to build a better future. The love story between human and dragon begins today? Well, that was an unexpected development. What happened to the grand adventure? What? But that's so misleading. Hmm. Out of a maximum of ten points, I'd give that a nine. The story certainly goes in an unorthodox direction, 
And the dragon girl sounds destined to be a hit character. Approved. What the heck? Hmm, good job, little one. You're not only drawing on your own experiences, but it seems you're filtering them through the lens of the kinds of light novels you've read in the past. I think you really understand what we're trying to do here. Thoughts from the experts? Are we able to work with this general framework to make an interesting story? Yeah, we think it works. I tend to overcomplicate the core concept if I'm not careful, so this deals with that problem. <laughs> That's good. Okay, we're done with chapter one. Let's move on to chapter two. Huh? Won't that do for now? Readers will devour your content a lot more quickly than you'd think. If we don't keep delivering the goods now we've caught their attention, all our hard work so far is in vain. Hurry, chapter two, let's go. Can't you see that Satomi is waiting? What's wrong with you? You don't look so good. Hmm, what a pity. I thought your beginner's luck would carry you a little further before it came to this. But alas, the time has come prematurely. Before it came to what? What's happened? The bane of our existence. Writer's block. It's your arch nemesis for life, appearing without warning and inflicting a pain worse than death upon the writer. They sell their souls just to get their muse back. Sounds awful! When this happens, the best thing you can do is have a bite to eat and take a proper break. <clears throat> uh, boss, get me a plate of fried tofu and get some kushikatsu for these two. Just the basic kind will do. Don't worry, this is my treat. Your treat? Oh, wait a minute. Miko, we'll be getting paid for all the hard work we're doing, right? Of course. Everyone that takes part in the creative process will be paid. All right, cool. Then let's press on, shall we? Don't give up now. For the sake of our paycheck, get your brain going! Ooh, ooh! Does this mean your inspirations come back? and befriends a young man who doesn't have the money to pay for anything. Only later do we find out that this young man is none other than Rex Lapis himself. With the help of the Chishing and the protection of the Adepti, I am free to roam this vast realm. Hmm. Is this the kind of cheap thrill that that guy was talking about? Hmm. I give it a 9.8. The story is fun and action-packed with no dark undertones. Also, there are a great many legends about Rex Lapis. I'm sure it will spark the people's curiosity. I, for one, think there's a sizable market for this. Approved. All right, well, let's just hope Zhang Li doesn't mind. Great, well, now Satomi can get started on that. Leave it to me, Lady Yai. Let's write about Inazuma in the third chapter, shall we? I can help with this one. We can use the Vision Hunt Decree or your experience in the Resistance. Any ideas? The strict principal writing of the Inazuma Academy decided to confiscate all light novels. With the help of Lady Kitsune, the protagonist defeats Principal Raiden in an exam before the throne, forcing the principal to abolish the literature hunt decree. Are we absolutely sure we can publish this? We can and we will. I think it's great. One thing, though. We'll need to rewrite the part about me giving you the omomori. Let's change it to... The mysterious Lady Kitsune teaches the protagonist a spell that can make their wishes come true. The protagonist uses this spell to defeat the Raiden Shogun in battle. That should do the trick. Whoa! So we're really going head to head with our rival on this one, huh? <laughs> I suppose so. 
Once they're done writing the manuscript, I'll write the passage where the protagonist recites the incantation myself. Are we done then? Do you really think this will be able to beat a first-hand guide to summoning spirits? The content is fine. Now we just need to promote it. I will contact an artist to make some illustrations. I'm positive they will be at least as good as those in A First-Hand Guide to Summoning Spirits. We'll also need an endorsement on a paper band around the book. I can get the wonderful Ms. Hina to write that. She runs a regular Q&A column in That's Life magazine. The people of Inazuma absolutely adore her. You're free to take a break while the creative team is doing their work, but please go by the Yai Publishing House at some point to commission Ms. Hina for that recommendation. Once our light novel is complete, let's meet at the writer's submission event. Hmm, let me think. What spell does Lady Kitsune teach to the protagonist? Ah, I've got it. <laughs> I've got to make sure it sounds suitably mysterious. Hmm. Add a little foreshadowing here. Uh, call back to the first chapter there. Call back via contrast, that is. Uh, plot twist here, obviously. Now, um, where's the best to explore the central theme? Wow, she seems really in the zone. Let's not disturb her. Don't worry. This story has a very clear narrative structure. Junkichi will definitely be able to work his magic on the writing front. Oh, yeah! How did it go with that incantation from a first-hand guide to summoning spirits? Did you manage to make a wish in the end? <laughs> nope. On the first day, Junkichi couldn't memorize the incantation because it was too long. On the second day, he didn't wake up in time and midnight came and went. Oh, then, on the third day... Mr. Shikiru, I thought we agreed not to speak of this. Miss Hina doesn't usually do endorsements, but since it's Lady Guji that's asking, we'll see what we can do. With Miss Hina getting so popular lately, a lot of people have come to us hoping to do a collaboration. But Miss Hina's not interested in any of it. She still prefers to focus all her efforts on replying to readers' letters, and turns down every promotional opportunity she can. Maybe that's why her fans like her so much. <laughs> I, I'm getting off topic here. Anyway, if we can get that endorsement from Miss Hina, you'll definitely get an exposure boost at the beginning. May your light novel sell well and set a new record for the Yai Publishing House. We'll do our best. Are you sure you'd like to submit this entry? Let me see. The Miraculous Adventures of the Traveler by Thousand Hands. What a strange pen name. Definitely your doing. Having been around you so much recently, Paimon's slowly starting to understand your unique tastes. What do you mean, strange? It took a lot of work by a lot of different people to get this thing finished. Don't you think it's a very descriptive pen name? We'll get this printed as a matter of priority, and conduct trial sales in pilot locations throughout Inazuma. I'll announce the sales numbers in three days. Uh-oh. Paimon's getting a little nervous now. Do you really think this is gonna work? That's right. Be confident in your work. That's exactly how a light novelist should be. Okay, then I'll sign you up. Please come back in three days for the results. Thank you all for your submission. I wish you the very best of luck.
Ah, you've all finally made it. Good news, everyone. I just received word that your light novel is flying off the shelves. Multiple sales locations are asking when we'll be printing more copies. Woohoo! That's great! This level of success is an amazing accomplishment for a new work. Most new books don't sell 30% of what you've sold. <laughs> I have free copies for each of you here. Please take them. The payment will follow shortly, and I'll notify you to come and collect it when the time comes. Oh, yeah! The whole reason why we made this light novel was to combat the influence of a first-hand guide to summoning spirits. Hmm. We sold a lot of copies, but it doesn't feel like we accomplished our goal. How do we know whether it worked? <laughs> oh, don't worry. The change is already underway. Shh. Listen to what the people around us are talking about. The conversation has already moved on, hasn't it? Hey guys, have you heard about this latest Kaidan thing doing the rounds? You just need to recite the incantation from a first-hand guide to summoning spirits at midnight, and your wish will come true! Oh that? <laughs> That's a throwback. That's old news, man. No one's talking about that anymore. The secret spells of Lady Kitsune is the new hit thing. I've already memorized all the incantations. The secret spells of Lady Kitsune? What's that? You haven't read it yet? Okay, so supposedly, if you recite the spell in there on a moonless night, you'll receive protection of the Kitsune and all the other powerful yokai. They can make any of your wishes come true. I heard that the incantations in a first-hand guide to summoning spirits have weird side effects. This one guy wished for a load of mora and got it, but then one night, it all turned to leaves and he developed a high fever. They actually had to use one of the secret spells of Lady Kitsune to get rid of the discomfort. That proves that the incantations in this book are more potent than the ones everyone was trying before. Pretty much everyone I know is desperate to try it out. Just waiting for a moonless night. Really? Well, I better go and prepare too. Well, feeling less worried now? Wow, you're right! Everyone's shifting focus! Moonless night that they're talking about. Hyman doesn't remember that detail from the brainstorming session. <laughs> this is something that will become very important to us further down the line. All right, it's time to move on to the next phase of the plan. Eh? There's a phase two? Of course. Behind every book that hits the market lies an author, right? Oh, yeah. If we leave him to his own devices, he might just write another guide to summoning spirits! Also, we still need to figure out what his motive for writing it was! Exactly. That's what we need to take care of next. Fortunately, I've already managed to identify the author. He's a failed light novelist named Tomoyuki. But when we went to ask him about it, he had no recollection whatsoever of having written the book. Yes, this is another case of possession. Only this time, whoever possessed him actively sought him out. After his novel submission failed, he was walking aimlessly in Araumi. In frustration, he shouted out, Please, someone, anyone, help me write a truly amazing novel! After that, he lost consciousness. But the spirit that wrote the book has already left him now, right? So what are we supposed to do? Simple. It wrote a summoning incantation in the book, didn't it? So we can just use its own method to make it manifest itself. And you, my little friend, are the perfect candidate for this role. <laughs> oh, what are you talking about? The fun's just about to begin. I don't usually like the Kaidan genre, but the secret spells of Lady Kitsune is an exception. I'm definitely going to give it a try as soon as we have a moonless night. Here's hoping Lady Kitsune will make my wishes come true. Honestly, it's a really gripping story. I'm still feeling pumped up. I hope the next volume comes out soon.
Wait, when is it coming out, actually? Oh, man. I hope it won't be a really long wait. I bought three copies of this light novel. One to read, one for my collection, and another one to lend out to my friends. It's worth the price just for the gorgeous illustrations alone. The ideal spot for a little meet-and-greet with a certain elusive author. This is the place where we are most likely to succeed in summoning the spirit. Really? But it feels so... eerie here. <laughs> that seems rather fitting, considering that we are dealing with the spirits of the deceased here. What are you so afraid of, honestly? We're finally about to meet the true author of a first-hand guide to summoning spirits. Aren't you excited? Paimon's heart is pounding, but Paimon's pretty sure it's not because of excitement. <laughs> Come on, in we go. Hey, wait up! Oh, Paimon's scared. Stay close by, okay? Don't leave Paimon all alone. <laughs> What a weird painting. Miko, do you know what it's supposed to show? Hmm. Probably a scene from ancient Inazuma. It's a good piece of artwork and all, but it's also kind of eerie. So it's a bit scary. Hmm. Huh. Looks like the artist signed their name. Um, Rakusai? Hmm. It's not very clear. Let's go inside and take a look. What's one more? I see everything! Right now, right here, emerge! Be still! Kamisato up! Suyu! Right here. Right now. Wow. This place is huge. Hey, is that a mirror? There's a really weird looking stool as well. I wonder what it's for. Ah, I see. Huh. This setup is quite handy. Saves me a lot of work. All right, go and take a look around. There should be a mechanism somewhere that makes the whole room move. Thank <laughs> you. 
stabilize. Hey! Make yourselves at home! Right here, right now, a sight to behold. Right here. Cascade! This. We'll have order. Solidify. Hey! Share my knowledge. Keep mind your damage. Emerge right now, right here. Nothing lasts forever. Emerge right here. Diminish <laughs> memory. Next, I will show you a secret Kitsune spell. This painting is a swift summoning medium, which means I'll be able to skip many of the more tedious steps. The murky mirror reflects the view of Inazuma in a bygone age. Spirits stirred by the sight of the past will be easily drawn to it. You're up next, little one. Come on, sit yourself down here. Yes. The whole point of a summoning ritual is for a dead person's spirit to possess a living person's body. You saw what happened to that Oni Samurai spirit. After leaving the host's body, he was only able to maintain his form for a very short time before disappearing. Are we positive that summoning a spirit to possess the Traveler isn't going to have any lasting negative consequences? Oh, you really care about the little one quite a lot, don't you? Hmm, I'm a little jealous. I wish my friends were caring like that. <laughs> anyway, are you scared, little friend? Don't you worry now, it'll be over soon. Just think of it like having a dream. 
Sit on the chair, stare at the painting, and relax your body and mind. But try and be natural. There's really no need to be nervous. It's like he's sitting inside the painting. Recite the incantation in your heart, little one. Also, you'll need to have some intense thoughts going through your head. A wish, for example. Now, what kind of wish do we think it would take to summon forth the author of A First-Hand Guide to Summoning Spirits? Anyone? Um, probably something to do with writing? Very good. The wish needs to be heartfelt, though, so let me help add a little realism to the equation. The book is selling exceptionally well, Traveler, but we're going to need an outline for Chapter 4 as soon as humanly possible. When is the earliest that you can turn it in by? The painting is moving again! What the...? <laughs> I never thought the day would come when I'd be summoned using my own ritual. <sighs> Getting a taste of my own medicine. What have we here? Another budding writer? What's come over you all? Why is everyone wishing for help with their writing? Are novels so popular in this day and age? We got you! So you were the one who wrote a first-hand guide to summoning spirits! What are you trying to do, hmm? Why'd you put that summoning incantation in the book, huh? What's your game here? Huh? What's this? Oh, ho, 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 ho. I see. No wonder this felt so familiar. I've walked right into your trap, haven't I? You ask me what my game is here? Well, of course. It was to use this incantation as a means for all the souls of the departed yokai to make their glorious return to the world and plunge all of Inazuma into a brutal, bloody war! What? Paimon knew it! You had an evil plan all along! Oh, did you now? Then how naive of you to let me possess this body so easily. I sense, yes, great power within him. Good. Good! With this power, no one shall be able to stand in my way! <laughs> wake up! Quick! Wake up! We gotta stop him! <laughs> It is futile. You shall never wake him again. This body now belongs to me! Hey! Come on, wake up! Don't let him take your mind! Miko, think of something! Miko! Miko! <laughs> oh, Rakusai, you haven't changed a bit. You caught on so quickly. Too perfect. <laughs> well, you made the face enough times that I couldn't exactly miss the hint. This is what you were going for, yes? Never one to stand on the sidelines of a good spectacle, are you? Always got to dive in and fan the flames, huh, you mischievous little kitsune, you? Look what you've done to this little flying one here. Aw, poor thing scared witless. <laughs> you were having plenty of fun playing the bad guy a moment ago. Now you're trying to blame it all on me? Urakusai? Miko, you guys 
know each other? Yes, we do. Of course we do. <laughs> Allow me to formally introduce the author of A First-Hand Guide to Summoning Spirits, Urakusai. Uh, no, wait. To be more accurate, it's Urakusai's memory. Memory? But isn't he a spirit? Ah, spirits, memories. They're just different words to describe the same thing. Something that comes from the ley lines. Do you remember that recent incident when the Rift Hounds were gnawing at the sacred Sakura's roots? You witnessed human memories leaking from the ley lines, didn't you? Well, since there are human memories, of course there are going to be yokai memories too. In life, yokai possess supernatural powers, and even when they are a shadow of their former selves from a bygone era, they still have the ability to control whether they are visible or not. Typically, yokai memories survive longer in the world than those of humans. <laughs> indeed, indeed. I was wandering around the sacred Sakura's roots when I suddenly heard someone yelling, Please, someone, anyone, help me write a truly amazing novel. It piqued my curiosity, so I popped inside his body and wrote a novel for him. So that's how it happened. But why did you include a summoning incantation in the novel? Oh, little one. Not to toot my own horn here, but when I was alive, I wasn't just another Kitsune, no. I was a mighty and powerful Daioko. The memories of other yokai can't possess human bodies at will like I can. But with this incantation, they can go one last little joyride in the world for a couple of days. Anything they're still itching to do, they can go and get it done. She's trying to say that all the commotion this causes is likely to be a great disturbance to the humans. Disturbance? <laughs> I guess you mean that we might leave them with some broken dreams after we leave, hmm? Oh, yes. And they might have a fever or whatever. But you know, I actually think that the most admirable thing about human beings is the way that they go out and shape their fate with their own two hands given that they're not born blessed with the same powers that we enjoy. As for those who would rather draw on external power than seek to improve themselves, it's quite right that they learn their lesson eventually. So when you think about it, we're actually doing the humans a big favor. Miko, you agree, don't you? <laughs> yes, that's what I thought too. All right then, you finally convinced Paimon you guys were right. What are you scared of, little one? Don't be deceived by her day-to-day -day antics. Miko is actually one of the most powerful yokai out there. Hmm, not only that, Irakusai, but my latest work has beaten that book you wrote, A First-Hand Guide to Summoning Spirits, to become the most popular in Inazuma. Hmm, of course. You were never one to make extra work for yourself where you can help it. And yet you went to all these lengths to find my painting room, and even took the trouble to summon me. I knew you must have some ulterior motive. You were always the one to pick a quarrel with me when we all used to gather around and share stories. All right, all right. You win, I lose. Happy now? Ha! <laughs> I finally get to hear you say it centuries later. Ooh, I must say it feels good. Hmm. <laughs> I remember when you were just a little girl, always hanging off my shoulders. A few hundred years later, and you're all grown up. Oh, Urakusai, how much time do you have left? Hmm. Not much. That goes for all of us, actually. We've all got to go back where we came from in the end. Everyone's quite content in many ways, but they still can't help but ask. Are we ever going to have another Hyakyako? <laughs> Don't you worry about that, Urakusai. Arrangements are being made. When my bell rings, it means the moonless night is upon us. <laughs> Great. Wonderful. Fantastic. Miko, it's been nice catching up. But I'd better conserve my energy if I want to stick it out until then. So, I'll be on my way now. All right. Goodbye, then, Urakusai. 
One last thing, Miko. I just want to know, have you been well all these years? I've been great, of course. Every day is a happy one. Especially these days. Not only do I have my light novels, but I've also met these two delightfully nosy outlanders. And even A is finally starting to come to her senses. Quite a miracle, given how pig-headed she can be. Oh, well, great. That's fantastic. Urakusai, you'd be right at home in this era. A great storyteller and artist like yourself would be the Yai Publishing House's ace in the hole. And I would personally be hounding you over your next installment. <laughs> He... disappeared! Are you awake? How are you feeling? Are you all there? Here, like last time, repeat after me. Oh, you beat me to it. Looks like your brain is intact. So, your first possession, hmm? What was it like? <laughs> Good. Saves me from having to explain everything again. Hearing Rakusai admit defeat has put me in the most wonderful mood. In return, it's only fair that we make sure to deliver on what they're all hoping for. Yes, though they only represent a tiny proportion of the memories in the ley lines, it will still be quite a sight to behold when the time comes. Since you've come this far, why don't you do one last thing for me, hmm? I'll need your help with the ritual. You cannot be serious, Miko! After all that, you still have more errands for us? Huh! You guys teamed up to scare Paimon just now! If you think Paimon's gonna do anything you ask for, take it dead! Aw, oh, come on. I'm really only asking you to finish what you started. Besides, your paychecks are still in my hands. <laughs> Paimon's paycheck? Ugh, well, there's no way out now. We're in too deep. Well, hello there, my little helpers. So nice of you to join me. You're right on time, too. Huh. As if we had a choice. We just want our paychecks. So, Nico, what exactly do we have to do to make this Hiyakiyako happen? Also, to be clear, we actually have no idea what it even means. It might sound ominous, but to put it simply, the Hiyakiyako is just a gathering of the yokai. Back in the day at yokai gatherings, once everyone had had plenty to drink, one by one they'd start soaring into the sky with their yokai powers. There were so many of them that their silhouettes would block out the moon. But now, the yokai memories that leak from the ley lines are weak. They are no longer able to fly. So I will be performing a convocation ritual for them, gathering all the wandering memories together in one place. When the time comes, they will gather in the sky above the Grand Narukami Shrine. Once their energy is spent, they will be satisfied and return to where they belong. All the preparations for the ritual have actually been made well in advance. Remember the incantation and the mention of Moonless Night that I added to our novel? Oh yeah! Something about reciting the secret spells of Lady Kitsune on a moonless night. That's the one. Actually, it's not a wish-granting incantation at all. It's a spell to help calm the leyline memories. When that time comes, let's all pitch in and help send them on their way. I will start the ritual preparations shortly, and at that time I need you to do two things. First, tell the Shrine Maidens to leave the mountain. During the Hyakyako, a whole swarm of yokai memories will be hanging around in the air above the Grand Narukami Shrine. Having the Shrine Maidens leave avoids the bothersome issue of someone potentially getting possessed. 
After that, I will commence the ritual, and the memories will begin to congregate. This will take some time. I need you at the foot of Mount Yogo during this part to keep an eye on nearby monster activity. The memories are normally dispersed and don't pose a threat, but when their energy is concentrated, it is likely to disturb the monsters. They may see this as an opportunity to try and make it up the mountain. I need you to fend them off so that that doesn't happen. Alright, got it. Then what? Hmm. Well, if at that point you felt like coming to the shrine and getting a close-up view of the yokai, I wouldn't say no. Okay, let's get going! Descend the mountain? Are those Lady Gucci's orders? Yep, Miku said the ritual she's gonna perform soon might pose a physical danger to you all. I see. I'll evacuate everyone right away. W what about you? We'll be taking care of a couple other things for her. And once we're done with that, we're gonna come back and do the ritual together. It seems like Lady Gucci places great trust in you. Lady Kuji's never allowed anyone else to be in her presence when she's conducted rituals like this in the past. Thank you for helping with the ritual, and good luck. Don't worry, we're much stronger than we look. Miku's about to start the ritual! Come on, let's go deal with the monsters down the mountain! Stabilize! Punish. Everyone hold hands! Take yourself to home! Emerge, right here! Kamisato Ari! Sui! I will have order! Solidify! Hey! Right now! Emerge! Right now! I'm always watching! Right here! Emerge! Yeah. Out of my sight <laughs> in this body yeah. belongs yeah. to ice and snow. These monsters look really riled up. Yep, yep. Let's get rid of them as fast as we can. Then we can get back in time to see the yokai. All right, here they come. Yeah. I see everything! Right here. Right now. Right here. Be still. Mind the daily. Order guide you. Everyone hold hands! Emerge. Right now. Uh, uh, uh. Sato on. Sui you. Emerge. Right now. Emerge. A sight to behold. Right now. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Order guide you. Show me what you've got. Mind the damage. Don't hold back. Everyone hold hands. Watch your step. Right here. Keep right here. Hurry. Memories of the yokai. They haven't been able to relax and soar through the air like this for a long time. Come with me. You all right, little one? You look a little nervous. It's just, Paimon's never seen anything like this before. Whoa, they've really blocked out the It does look a little intimidating, doesn't it? But I know them. They may be loud and brash at times, but they are good and brave souls. Even after losing their lives in a brutal war, they have never given in to grief or despair. Alas, their time is short. <laughs> come to an end. <laughs> Since you're sorry to see them leave, why don't you do the recital along with me? Oh Hakushin, cause of this enchantment, in reverence I perform this rite. In reverence I perform this rite. To be a guiding light. Recite the secret spells of Lady Kitsune tonight, and our wishes will come true. <gasps> oh, Hakushin, cause of this enchantment. I perform this rite to be a guiding light. Your unrivaled power will be honored eternally. Kusai, you asked if I was doing well. Really, every day is a happy day for me. But watching you all leave now, I can't help but feel a little lonely. Mm. Just a little, of course. Hmm. Just as I thought, the ritual went very smoothly. Thank you both. Hmm? Oh, I'm great. But the look on your face just now... I'm fine, seriously. Really, I... No. 
Honestly, you two. Pico! Fine. Well, if you're dead set on doing something for me, you can treat me to a meal. Sure, no problem. A meal it is. Okay. Well, see you soon then. to a meal. The venue is Uyu Restaurant. Let's go! Oh, wait is unbearable. How is the next chapter of the Miraculous Adventures of the Traveler not released yet? It was quite a surprise when the moonless night finally came. Yeah, that huge black cloud over Mount Yogo that night. It just seemed to form out of nowhere. But then nothing happened after I made a wish using the method in that book. Yeah... I guess light novels are just fiction after all, huh? That night was definitely the nail in the coffin for the incantations from novels fad. Still, something tells me the miraculous adventures of the Traveler will remain an interesting series for a long time to come. Huh? Paimon can't see Miku anywhere. Guess she's not out here. Uh, maybe she went inside already. Let's head in and look for her. Ah, my little friends. There you are. Nico, what is this? You started eating without us? I did, yes. You're paying, after all. The thought of being able to eat the most expensive dishes and drink the finest sake, all for absolutely free? Oh, I just couldn't wait any longer. Ah, boss, see these two faces here? Remember them. They're the ones picking up the bill later. Alrighty. Uh... What's gotten into you? Come on, sit yourselves down. You have to try this fish. It's found exclusively in the waters around Seirai Island. They shipped it to Inazuma overnight, and it was still alive right up until I ordered it. Or maybe you'd rather try this? I know, I know. I normally can't bring myself to drink sake this expensive either. If you don't drink alcohol, that's fine too. There are all kinds of fruit juices covering the whole price spectrum. Nico! Uh, you were outrageous! Last time we were here working on a novel, all you ordered for us was the plainest kushikatsu! Hmm? Strange. I remember no such thing. Oh, so what? You did offer to treat me to a meal, didn't you? Anyway, I am something of a VIP, you know. Wouldn't you find it embarrassing to treat me anything short of lavishly? Miko, this meal is going to be super expensive! Aren't you afraid we won't be able to afford it? <laughs> oh, don't you worry about that. You can most definitely afford it. They're still printing your light novel by the batch, you know. You have quite the generous payment due. on your faces right now. Too perfect. <laughs> oh, by the way, since nobody's wishes came true on the moonless night, novels with incantations are no longer in vogue. So you'll have to come up with something new for the next chapter of The Miraculous Adventures of the Traveler. 
The deadline is looming. I'm counting on you. Thank you for the meal. I thoroughly enjoyed myself today. Oh, did I mention? A saw that convocation ritual we performed over the Grand Narukami Shrine. I know she can be pig-headed, but it still took me by surprise when she wrote me a long and sternly worded letter about it, chastising me for taking this whole thing much too far. Oh, I hardly see what all the fuss is about. Everyone seemed perfectly happy to me. That's just like Erika, always refining her craft. Welcome to Uyu Restaurant. Please talk to me if you want to order. 